In the newest entry in Fears to Fathom Iron Bark Lookout, we come in the shoes of an Iron Bark State Park Ranger who has just been transferred here on official notice. The game is supposedly based on true events, though I highly doubt that. I'll explain my reasons at the end of this video. So the game starts off with a text message from Jack Nelson explaining how he came to be in this situation. The screen then switches to Jack driving an RV to a diner where he gets information about some missing children and how horrifying that situation must have been for their parents. The place where they weren't missing was the Iron Bark State Park. And Jack has just been hired by the fire department to look out for fires here and he makes his way towards the park right after eating his dinner. He gets settled in, his tower is Tower 11, and there he communicates with the occupant of Tower 12 named Connor Hawkins, who will brief him about the things that he needs to do, and after which he settles in for the night. At around 3 a.m., Jack wakes up suddenly by a static noise, but Connor has not messaged him about anything as he himself is sleeping currently. So Jack goes outside to relieve himself because you don't need your calls. So he goes outside to check and sees that someone is staring below towards his tower and suddenly leaves. Jack does not think much of this and goes back to sleep. The next night, Jack gets briefed by Connor to check a nearby campsite that is emitting smoke. It's near the Lacey Trail, the same trail where the kids went missing. Jack heads there and finds the campsite empty with just the fireplace running and a few tools scattered about. He hears whistling and a man scream and feels uneasy, so he just quickly extinguishes the fire and heads back to his tower and reports the incident to Connor, who says that he will report it to the correct authorities. While sleeping, Jack wakes up to an unusual feeling at 2am and finds that someone else is outside his station. He heads outside and sees a skull laid just in front of the door. He then reports the incident to Connor who says that it must be some kids playing a prank on him and tells him to lock the doors just in case. A few more nights later, Jack notices a flare in the vicinity and a lost hiker radio contacts him asking for directions. But suddenly something goes wrong when he mentions that he sees Jack standing behind a tree whistling, which Jack denies, telling him that he is back in his tower. Nevertheless, Jack manages to help the hiker find his way to safety. He then gets visited by the state park ranger, bringing him supplies, who asks him about the previous incident that took place at 2am, and after telling him what happened, all he replies is that, Lord have mercy. A few nights later, while collecting firewood, Jack gets visited by a maintenance worker named Silas who explains something philosophical about forest fires and how not all of them can be extinguished. The dude seems creepy, so Jack goes to tell this about Connor, who says that there is no one there working for maintenance and that person was probably pulling a prank on Connor. You know, I'm starting to think that Connor might be in on this with the way he reacts to all of these events happening to Jack. Now comes the final night, and Connor mentions another spoke nearby Jack's area. He says since he's been working non-stop, so he is really tired and going to bed, so Jack has to check on the smoke and report it. He signs off as Jack heads outside to see a very disturbing setting. It looks to be a cut-like ritual taking place outside the lakeside with people dressed as the members of the KKK, burning what seems to be a body. Jack takes a picture, but forgets to turn off the flash, and rightly so, the people get angry as they feel that they have had their pictures taken without consent. One of the members finds the tower and hunts Jack down, and he manages to escape in the RV that he brought with him. The final text shows that no one believed Jack, and told him off, saying that it was just a prank we pulled on him, and that people tend to imagine things when they are alone. A lackluster end, but good enough for horror, I guess. Now, I really think that this was a, state, a prank pulled by the state park rangers on the new guy, considering how everyone is reacting around him, and with the way the door to Billy's office was closed at the end of the game, who is the uh, state park ranger who helps him settle in his tower. But also, you will notice that the shoes of the cult member that was hunting us 
seemed like those long military shoes that park rangers wear yeah, that are patrolling the forest. They probably thought it would be fun to prank him, but it got out of hand as he managed to get in his RV and escape, so they decided to keep the whole thing a secret so that they don't get fired and chose to not, de not tell Jack that it was planned. The other thing that I believe is that this whole thing is made up. I searched online and found no news about any missing children from Iron Bark State Park, which is a park in Washington as mentioned by the tape that was voiced by Jack Septicai. The only information that I found was the disappearance of a man, a New Zealand man who got lost in a park in Australia. Which could be the case in this game as there is a single tent that we get to find during the second night when we are supposed to be investigating the smoke that is being emitted there. So it could be related to that, but I highly doubt it. Not to mention that the guy says that nobody believed him and mentions no trace of him showing the picture that he took there of those cultists. Did he lose his phone or something? He definitely wasn't using a camera and he definitely did not mention losing his phone along the way so why didn't he mention the showing the photo anywhere? But hey, I could be wrong about this. There could be a lot of stuff that I missed during the game but I'm choosing to believe that this story is fake. It's your opinion what you want to believe.